Warning. Intentionally interacting with venomous snakes is inherently dangerous, which can be mitigated with proper training and safety gear. This video provides only an introduction to the basic concepts necessary to mitigate a potentially dangerous situation and is not intended to qualify individuals in snake handling. Additional training is recommended before handling any potentially dangerous species. The United States government, Department of Defense, Department of Navy, their employees and contractors are not responsible for any injuries or deaths resulting from interactions with potentially dangerous species, including venomous snakes. A permit is required to move snakes that are Endangered Species Act listed. It is recommended that you check with your installation natural resource manager. These techniques are designed with only native U.S. snake species in mind. Additional techniques are likely necessary for other snake species found outside of the U.S. This video was developed by the Department of Defense, Partners in Amphibian and Reptile Conservation Group for the Department of the Navy. Venomous Snake Safety and Removal Techniques This video was developed to assist Department of the Navy Natural Resource Managers and Pest Management Personnel. The purpose of this video is to introduce and demonstrate various techniques for safely manipulating venomous snakes and how to remove and relocate them if deemed necessary, as well as to demonstrate the assortment of proper tools and show their correct usage. Equipment there are many types of containers that can be used. The two that we show here are a trash can and a five gallon bucket, both with secure lids. All containment used in this video is not air or water tight, but can be reasonably and safely secured. We recommend keeping all containers away from extreme heat, cold, and sunlight at all points when containing a live animal. A gentle stream of water can be used to help facilitate the snake moving from one area to another. These water bottles shown here, or a garden hose, are examples of what can be used. Snake gaiters, or chaps, in combination with leather boots, protect the lower part of the leg from potential injury. Some of the most important equipment used will be the hooks and the tongs. These are used to manipulate the animals from a safe distance. In order for you to become more familiar with your equipment, let's take a look at a standard 39 inch hook. Here you have the handle or the grip. At the end is the foot of the hook and the rest is considered the shaft. The foot of the hook is the only part that should come in contact with the snake. You should never grab the shaft of the hook. Your hand should remain in contact with only the grip. Now let's look at a pair of snake tongs. Here you have the handle or the grip. Here are the jaws and the rest is considered the shaft. If using tongs, rubber coated jaws with a wider opening are recommended to reduce the risk of injury to the snake. But do keep in mind that squeezing too hard with any tongs can cause significant injury to the snake, including broken vertebrae and even death. Snare poles or catch poles are a piece of equipment that should never be used when working with snakes, as they cause severe injury to the snake, including broken vertebrae, which often results in death. If the snake is in a location where it can be avoided, it is best to leave the snake alone. If the snake needs to be moved, there are many methods of trying to get the snake to move before any manipulation is necessary such as a snake occurring in a military training or housing area where there is risk of a human getting hurt. A gentle stream of water, as demonstrated here, can be used to help facilitate the snake moving in a specific direction. It is recommended that the snake is watched until it has moved to a safer location. Different snakes and species require careful consideration regarding safe distances. We generally advise staying as far away as possible to avoid the snake strike zone and to encourage the snake to leave safely on its own while maintaining visual contact until it has reached a safer area. Specific circumstances should be practiced with the assistance of a trained professional to understand the strike zones and safe distances better. Now let's get into the techniques. The techniques and methods we will be covering will be the one hook method, a two hook method, and the combined use of hooks and tongs. With the one hook method, 
the hook should gently be slid underneath the snake to about one third to one half of the body. This is for the snake's safety, as well as to help the snake stay balanced on the foot of the hook. The snake can go into the container head first or tail first. Once the hook is removed from the container, fully secure the lid. This we will cover later in the video. Some snakes do not tend to stay on the hook as well as others. In these situations, sometimes multiple attempts are necessary. Sometimes lifting the snake a little more quickly can help the snake balance on the hook. In this scenario, the assistant brings in the bucket and prepares it for the technician. Neither person ever takes their eye off of the snake. When the snake can be lifted slowly, it is easier to maintain control. While the snake is being lowered into the bucket, the assistant prepares the tongs and the lid so it can be put on the bucket. Tongs can be used to help put the lid on the container. This keeps both the technician and the assistant at a safe distance from the open container at all times. Once the lid is set in place, it is important to keep pressure on the lid at all times until it is fully secure. At this point, the assistant is still keeping an eye on the bucket and the technician for safety, as well as animals off of leashes or any people in the area that may cause an unsafe situation. In the two hook method, the technician has one hook in each of their hands. This is generally a good technique to use with larger, heavier bodied snakes. This is because the snake's own weight could cause it harm with only one hook. You'll want to use one hook toward the first third of the body and the other hook toward the last third of the body to help evenly distribute the weight of the snake. It is okay if it takes multiple attempts to lift the snake. Notice that in this scenario, the assistant is standing by with another hook and a pair of tongs. This is an added measure of safety as well as helping to prevent the snake from leaving the area. However, it is understood that you will not always have multiple hooks and tongs at your disposal. When working with particularly larger snakes, as in this scenario, it is recommended that you use tongs or another tool to help put the lid on the container. Once the lid is set in place, the technician keeps constant pressure on the top of the lid until it is fully secured. There are times when you will not be working with snakes in an open area. This is another situation where two hooks may be beneficial. As seen here, the two hooks are used more for control than for weight distribution. The assistant, which cannot be seen at this time, is only a few feet away, helping to contain the public at a safe distance while the technician does his job. When working with venomous snakes or any other dangerous animal, the safety of the technician and assistant are just as important as the safety of the general public and the animals themselves. With the combined hook and tongs method, the tongs are to be used toward the head of the snake on the first third of the body, and this is primarily for control and safety. The hook should then be used to support the majority of the snake's weight. When using tongs, it is very important to not squeeze too hard, as this can cause injuries to the snake, including broken vertebrae. Tongs can also be used for getting snakes out of difficult situations. The technician is applying gentle pressure by squeezing the handle of the tongs. In these difficult situations, the hook can be used to help get the snake onto the tongs. This is generally safer for the snake and the technician. Notice that the tongs are not at all closed and not squeezing on the snake. Again, this is just for control and safety. And squeezing can cause injury to the snake. Notice that this container is different than others that we have seen in this video. There are many different container types that can be utilized in these situations. This technician even uses padlocks on the side of the container to keep himself and others safe while transporting the snake. Now let's talk about the proper use of the containers. 
When one person is putting on the lid by hand, the lid needs to be used as a shield to separate the hand from the snake. When two people are working with the container, one focuses solely on the snake, while the other takes care of the lid. When putting on the lid and securing it, there should be plenty of space between your body and the container. Again, the assistant is using the lid as a shield when approaching the bucket. If preferred, as an added measure of safety, an eye hook can be inserted into the top of the lid. This allows the technician or the assistant to apply the lid with only a hook keeping the body at a maximum distance. All containers should be properly labeled so that it is clear it contains a venomous snake. In any of these situations, with any of the containers, it is incredibly important to stay calm and composed. Make smooth and purposeful movements, stay attentive and relaxed, and adjust as needed to the situation. When choosing a container, the snake should have adequate room for coiling at the bottom. Regardless of your preferred method of applying the lid, it is always important to keep steady pressure and make sure that you keep your body a safe distance away from the bucket as the snakes can and will strike at the lid. This is also why it is important to make sure that your lid secures fully on your container and why threaded or locking lids are preferred when available. Prior to release of the animal, consult your on-base wildlife biologist for proper release locations. It is highly recommended to first attempt to find a suitable location on base before relocating to an off-base site. Distance also needs to be considered. Scientific studies conducted by herpetologists and wildlife biologists have shown that as the distance from the site of removal increases, the chances of the animal's survival decreases. It is also important to consider safe locations for release. Areas of lower human population should first be considered if possible. This is to avoid a similar situation in the future where removal and relocation is again necessary. A permit is required to move snakes that are Endangered Species Act listed. It is recommended that you check with your installation natural resource manager. In the event of a venomous snake bite, the CDC recommends the following first aid. First, seek medical attention as soon as possible dial 911 or call local emergency medical services. Try to remember the color and shape of the snake, which can help in the treatment of the snake bite. Keep still and calm. This can slow down the spread of the venom. Inform your supervisor. Apply first aid if you cannot get to the hospital right away. This first aid includes lying or sitting down with the bite below the level of the heart. Wash the bite with soap and water and cover the bite with a clean, dry dressing. A link to the CDC is seen below for more information on this topic. It is important to not do any of the following. Do not pick up the snake or try to trap it. Do not wait for symptoms to appear if bitten. Seek immediate medical attention. Do not apply a tourniquet. Do not slash the wound with a knife. Do not suck out the venom. Do not apply ice or immerse the wound in water. Do not drink alcohol as a painkiller. Do not drink caffeinated beverages. Again, the CDC link below will give you more information on this topic. The following organizations were happy to assist in this educational production. And thank you all for your service to our country.